Uh, distinguished speakers and colleagues, my name is Jean D'Aragon, officer in charge of the United Nations Office for Sustainable Development, or UNOSD in China, Republic of Korea. Welcome and thank you all for joining this International Marathon preparatory webinar focusing on impact investments in cities, innovations to finance the SDGs locally. I would like to especially welcome our distinguished speakers, Ms. Caroline Lombardo, Chief of the International Tax and Development Corporation Branch, Enhancement for Sustainable Development Office at the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, or UNDESA. Ms. Bernardia Irawati Chandradewi, who is the Secretary General of the United Nations Cities and Local Government, USCLD ASPAC. Um, again, uh, also the Honorable Mr. J. Prakash, Mayor of North Delhi Municipal Corporation. Mr. Sudhir Bhatnagar is the CEO of the South Asian Region Department, or SARD. And Mr. Thank you. Uh, Raymond Sander. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Mr. Raymond Sanner, Officer Emeritus, University of Basel. The, uh, the webinar is part of a series UNOSD is organizing on the topics of the International Mayors Forum planned in November this year. Through this webinar series, we aim to learn about the challenges that the local governments are facing, as well as potential solutions for a rapid and sustainable recovery from COVID-19 as we prepare for the International Mayors Forum. Impact investments are investment funds that can raise capital for national to local governments to achieve posi positive social, economic, and environmental impacts to strengthen government services and outcomes. In recent years, we have seen more and more national governments implementing blue or green bonds to finance a transformation for climate resilient investments in infrastructures and other areas to advance the sustainable development goals or the SDGs. In fact, the current uh, size of the global impact investing market has now grown to over 500 billion US dollars. As you know, local governments are currently facing multiple challenges in delivering services and protecting the gains realized on the SDGs and the 2030 agenda amid the devastating impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. National and local actors are seeking innovative approaches to close the finance gap and accelerate a resilient recovery. Countries across the globe, for instance, Fiji, India, and Mexico, are launching impact bonds to close essential gaps in public services and achieve the 2030 agenda. Taking the example of Mexico, the country launched a sovereign SDG bond just a few weeks ago with the support of the UN and the private sector. This sovereign SDG bond will use a localized finance approach to finance projects in about 1,350 municipalities across the country and strengthen public services delivery in those Mexican cities and towns. This shows one way that, lo that national governments can follow to enhance their support to local governments for promoting the adoption of impact finance and other solutions for a rapid and sustainable recovery from COVID-19 and accelerating progress on delivering the 2030 agenda. Today, thanks to our panel of speakers, we will explore how this new field of capital can raise funds to close financing gaps for the SDG implementation locally. We look forward to hearing their recommendations, experience and critical insights, and engaging you all in the discussions through the WebEx chat and Q&A. Thank you. Uh, now, before moving to our uh, panelists online, I would like to invite you to watch and listen to the opening remarks from Ms. Caroline Lombardo, Chief of the International Tax and Development Corporation Branch, financing 
for Sustainable Development Goals at UN DESA. Honorable Mayors, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to address this 2020 International Mayors Forum. I thank the United Nations Office for Sustainable Development for this opportunity to share some of UNDESA's insights in promoting local finance across the globe. Strengthening local government finance to help achieve the SDGs is a timely topic. Local governments are the frontline responders in the COVID-19 crisis. Yet, with revenue losses of up to 60%, you face a Herculean task in mobilizing the resources needed to respond to the crisis and to recover from its economic and social impacts. Strengthening local development finance will be key in building back better. The 2015 Addis Ababa Action Agenda on Financing for Development provides the framework for financing the SDGs. In our work with local governments in implementing the Audis Agenda, we have gleaned some key insights on local finance. I'd like to share these with you now. First, improving local finance is a global development imperative. Urban economies account for approximately 80% of global GDP. Improving their financial health will be critical to ensure the SDGs deliver for the poorest and most vulnerable people. The pandemic makes clear local governments are the first line of defense in times of crisis, whether of a health, climate, or geophysical nature. Second, local finance in countries with special needs is particularly challenging and deserves special attention. Local governments in these countries have limited resources to deal with the significant economic, social, and environmental impacts of megatrends such as rapid urbanization, changes to the global economic environment, climate change, and increased vulnerability to natural disasters. Third, although many governments in developing countries have taken steps towards decentralization in political, fiscal, and administrative spheres, implementation remains uneven. Often mandates increase, but finance does not follow. It is therefore critical to ensure that decentralization is well sequenced and well resourced. Fourth, sound public financial and asset management is a prerequisite for successful service delivery at the local level. Management reforms tend to deliver results where they take into account local institutional capacities and are led by effective coordination arrangements to monitor and guide the process. Allow me in this context to draw your attention to our upcoming handbook on infrastructure asset management, which UN DESA will launch early next year with the UN Capital Development Fund. Jean will work closely with our team to put together a webinar for you on this important topic later this year. Fifth, while local revenues in developing countries remain insufficient to meet local development needs, important progress has been made where revenue mechanisms embrace a set of key principles. They include revenue adequacy, tax buoyancy, stability, correspondence between tax payments and tax benefits, as well as administrative and political feasibility and equity. At the same time, intergovernmental transfers make sense as part of the division of responsibilities between the central and local government based on their core advantages and competencies. Central governments have inherent advantages in generating revenues, and local and regional governments have inherent advantages in producing certain key services. Importantly, in times of crises, central governments need to increase fiscal support and ensure that fiscal stimulus measures reach the local level where they are needed most. Six. Given the enormous local infrastructure financing needs, we should explore new market-based borrowing mechanisms to leverage and scale up local revenues. Government can help promote these mechanisms by building local capacity for project development, improving local creditworthiness 
including through asset management reforms, promoting local rating industries, using credit enhancement and risk mitigation tools, and creating a conducive legal and regulatory framework for local finance that balances financial stability concerns with greater access to credit. Moreover, national and municipal development banks or funds can play an important role in supporting and pioneering innovative financing mechanisms. In these efforts, we must remain practical and realistic. Very few local governments in developing countries have access to private finance. A careful assessment of the local context, institutional, political, and financial, must determine if and where such instruments deserve further consideration. Last but not least, there is much room to improve international cooperation on local finance. We need to focus on partnership development, better coordination, and a more focused division of labor in all areas of local finance. Donor engagement must be structured in a way that allows for a systematic handoff of projects to the local partner to ensure sustainability and scaling up of successful interventions. Honorable mayors, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share some of our key insights on strengthening local government finance for the SDGs, including in the context of COVID-19 response and recovery. I would have been thrilled to join you in person. I warmly welcome you to engage in our various UN platforms dedicated to advancing financing for sustainable development. This includes our multi-stakeholder development cooperation forum, where mayors and local authorities have been key players from the outset, and our policy dialogues on how taxation can help increase the resilience of economies, public health systems, and climate response. I thank you and my fellow panelists for your attention. I wish you all a very productive session. I'd like to thank our colleagues, Ms. Caroline Lombardo for, from UNDESA for our uh, opening remarks, which make a nice introduce, introduction to the webinar on uh, impact investment in cities, innovations to finance the SDGs locally. And now I would like to call the next speaker, Ms. Bernardia Irawati Chandradewe, Secretary General of United Cities and Local Governments, Asia Pacific. Ms. Bernadia, uh, the microphone is yours now. I think you might be, you know, your microphone maybe is, in, is mute and we, we don't have your image either. Your video may not be on, Ms. Bernalia. Do we have Ms. Bernadia uh, Irawati Chandrawi? Okay. 
I think. Um, yes, but you, yes, I see that we have uh, a technical problem. So maybe we could. Uh, can we go to? Are we able to fix this quickly or? The microphone is muted. Okay, just a sec. I think we should move on to the next uh, speaker for now before Bernadia fixes her microphone. Okay, so we will go with the next speaker. Um, and we'll have to uh, go with Mr. the Honorable Mr. J. Prakash, um, Mayor of the North Delhi Municipal Corporation. Mr. Prakash, the microphone is yours. Hopefully it will work. Please go ahead and uh, also with your your video on, please. Namaskar. Honorable Chair, Secretary General of the United Nations, Office of the Sustainable Development Speaker, other dignitaries. It is a matter of to me to represent North Delhi Municipal Corporation as its mayor. I am thankful to my party for their visionary leadership, which follow a complete development agenda. In a progressive manner, I took over as the mayor during a challenging time of COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic with the help and guidance from my party leadership and support of my efficient official and support staff of the corporation. I am proud to say we have managed to cattle the pandemic spread and safeguard citizens of our area. The corporation deals in a variety of issues ranging from health and hygiene, sanitation, cleanliness, maintenance of public places of importance public grievance, refusal, extending education, and also enhancing revenue generation through collection of taxes and maintenance of parking, etc. The corporation has all modernized civic services and ensure optimum use of these service to the citizens of, of our corporation. The most important service rendered by the corporation is the provision of free primary education. Through its 700 North Delhi Municipal Corporation schools, which caters to around 3,17,400 children studying in the classes nursery to fifth. Apart from this, there are about 20 aided schools and 125 recognized schools. It gives me immense pleasure to say that during Corona pandemic, our teachers and school administrators worked very hard and made sure that they reach the children through technology, online classes, webinar, and fun activities. This is as per the new education policy, which was recently launched by the government of India 
under the dynamic leadership of our hon Honorable Prime Minister Chirinandar Modi ji, this policy restructure school education by setting out three to six year as preschool age and dilute, dilute the emphasis on board exam. This is a welcome change which reduced tensions of exam from children's mind. Society of all round development served has been a pioneer in ensure educational reforms and have done it in an inclusive manner, enhancing quality education to children with the use of appropriate innovative technology. They are one of the partners in a program ensuring learning level outcome with children. Their learning enhancement efforts with complementing learning resources with a digitalized interface has been peerless. The development impact bond initiative has been a unique effort in enhancing learning level outcomes with good able outreach through CERD. We are planning to emulate the positive learning of this intervention across all our schools and are thankful to the sponsor for choosing North Delhi Municipal Corporation as their outreach areas, our teachers and SART team are making efforts to ensuring quality introduction of competency-based assessment tools. The medal support to the children who need academic support, etc. Without talking much of our time, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me this huge opportunity to showcase and enhance performance of our corporation. I would like to thank my official support staff, teachers, school, principal, SAD, and the donors and support organization of their collective efforts. I would also like to thank my party, the Bharati Janta Party, which has a visionary leadership in our Honorable Prime Minister Srinandra Modi ji. I am indebted to my party for the responsibility they have wasted in me. I feel to have addressed the August gathering of learned people. I take the opportunity to invite other mayors and interested people and civic agencies to pay visit to our schools and participate in contributing for the developments of our corporation. Namaskar, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, Bhot Bhot Dhanyavad. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Mayor pra Prakash. Uh, from uh, the North Delhi Municipality Corporation. Uh, thank you very much for your very uh, interesting presentation. And uh, I, I, I'm told that uh, now we still have problems with uh, Ms. Bernadia. So we'll, we'll move on with the next uh, uh, panelist, Mr. Sudhir Bhatnagar, the CEO of the South Asian uh, Region Department. Uh, Mr. Bhatnagar, uh, the, the microphone is yours. So, and then uh, please also um, uh, put have your uh, video on. We don't see you yet. And, uh, and your mic on, please. The, uh, the floor is yours, as we say. Yeah. 
Thank you, Mr. Jean. Thank, Thank you, you. you. Thank you. The United Nations Office of Sustainable Development for giving me opportunity. Honorable mayors on the dais, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for giving us opportunity to share some of our learning with North Delhi Municipal Corporation. Let me tell you a little bit about SARD and then we will be talking about our education intervention with North Delhi Municipal Corporation. May I request to go next slide, please? Yeah, so SARD is around 25 year old organization. In last 25 years, we are able to mobilize support from bilateral, multilateral, international uh, uh, donors, institutional donors and leading corporations. But in last few years, more focus on the uh, international uh, civil societies and the leading corporations and many leading corporations, they are supporting us. Right now, we are working in 13 locations of India, mainly northern India, but we do have a lot of intervention in mega cities of like Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore and some part of Gujarat and Maharashtra. Uh, education is one of the prime focus area and within education we are having different verticals. So education and health basically we are working across the country and in last 20, 25 years our got many awards and our awards are uh, endorsed at the national, international level. Uh, you can see a lot of uh, partnership uh, with leading corporations and also with municipal corporation in Delhi. So wherever we work, we work only with the government. We don't believe to run a parallel structure. So our partnership is more with the government on different thematic areas. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. So this is our geographical outreach. You can see mainly we are working in northern India, but we do have some work in Gujarat and Maharashtra and otherwise some mega cities like uh, Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore. And right now we are covering around 1.5 million beneficiaries through different location and over 500 development professional. They are working with us full time people. These are full time people who are working with, uh, with us. We do have a lot of volunteers also. Next slide, please. Yeah. So our work is more or less aligned with the sustainable development goal. As I said that education transformation goal number four is the major focus area and within education we are also talking about uh, technology and gender diversity inclusion is a cross cutting theme but we do have a lot of work on WASH and uh, you know, skill development, livelihood, microfinance also. But education and health, around 80% budget is going only on education and health. Next slide, please. Yeah. So in India, we are having roughly around 1.3 billion people. Uh, compared to other state, India population is one of the major challenge and we are having very large scale. So even Delhi population is much, much higher than a, a country population. So across the country, 1.3 billion people, 1.5 million schools. We are having roughly around 260 million students, more than 900 universities we have. Uh, education uh, training is one of the major focus area and unfortunately or fortunately 8.5 million teachers we have so even teacher training is a bit challenge for us and ensuring quality is a bit concerned because some people are talking about building infrastructure is a quality some people are talking about learning level outcome some people are talking about capacity building of teachers so quality means different people are having different definitions but we are talking about approach appropriate learning level outcome and that is a bit concerned because India in last few years enrollment is not a big issue that is no uh, more challenges with us so enrollment is very much there we are also able to retain our children but quality outcome that is a bit concerned so grade appropriate uh, uh, you know the learning outcome is a bit ch challenge and we are having very diverse background of teachers we are having teacher who are coming from regular government teacher training institute we are coming we are getting teacher from a private teacher training institute we are also getting teacher from a distance education mode so teacher training uh, and the diverse background of teachers uh, that is a bit challenge for us next slide please 
yeah you can just need to press yeah. so you can see the number of school and uh, these number of schools will you know tell you about the challenge which we are facing across the country and you can see on the screen the total number of school and uh, uh, teachers and uh, you know student that i have already told you in my previous slide so even in primary education we are having 840 uh, 100 you know for, uh, no, 840 uh, 1546 schools around uh, 8 8 million schools we have even at primary level and if you are going at upper primary which we called elementary so you can add few more uh, you know thousand schools so uh, scale is a bit challenge for us go to next slide please yeah so rural and urban area so still uh, we are um, covering around you know 16 percent urban population and rest is the rural population so uh, i think we are uh, uh, right now facing learning poverty so learning is a bit challenge for us because learning level outcome everybody is talking we had many researches and many studies and the government of india is putting lot of efforts to ensure the learning level outcome and especially in the global learning crisis across low and middle income countries just four out of ten children will be on track so this is the data shared by different agencies even the world bank also quoted one of the recent uh, uh, you know uh, uh, their research that uh, majority of the children are deprived in terms of quality and they are facing learning poverty so learning level outcome is a bit challenge almost for all the, all the people so including our most of the states they are still facing problem on learning level outcome next slide please so grade appropriate learning outcome that is one of the major challenge and that is why with most of the support organization we are mainly focusing on learning level outcome we are trying to address the common error misconception and hard spot for ensuring the learning level outcome we are having lot of uh, you know learnings through uh, which uh, we, we try to consolidate our learning we try to replicate in different context and over a period of time we go back to government and uh, you know advocating for mainstreaming of our innovative uh, pedagogy model we are also having lot of manuals modules we are now designing textbook for different state government this year we design workbook for government of rajasthan before that for government of haryana government of madhya pradesh chhattisgarh jharkhand so now wherever we work we work with the government so we design teacher manuals curriculums interactive material now most of the sard uh, content is available on uh, ncrt portal that is part of ministry of human resource development so mhrd is having three very important portal on interactive material one is diksha diksha app they are having mainly for teacher there is a another very important app called e partshala on e partshala anybody can download any textbook any interactive material from grade first to grade 12th and then we are having noer national repository of open education resources so that is a repository where we are having more than 15000 uh, uh, you know uh, resources anybody can download interactive material textbooks quiz approach papers white papers so everything is available on ministry of human resource development portal so these are the three important portal which uh, the ministry of human resource development and fortunately sard is having all this material available on this government of india portal so sard agenda is very much aligned with the government in schools also we have set up child resource center so in my coming slide i will be talking more about child resource center how these centers are very unique to address the learning gap and how we are working very closely with the teacher so curriculum community development teaching monitoring assessment this is a ongoing thing this is part of our innovation even 
the assessment tools are very different and that is based on the competency and we do have uh, tools based on knowledge application understanding and these are easy moderate difficult so over a period of time we reshuffle the tools also and uh, we are helping now in designing these tools so there is a dedicated portal where all these tools are available and anybody can download and school teachers are getting help from that uh, feedback management system so all the sad resources and government resources are available on fms portal anybody can download the only thing school need to create their own id and they will get all these material from one single window so around the year we are having lot of uh, in service uh, teacher for government school teachers and after training we are having lot of follow up and follow on so not only training but follow up and follow on is equally important so next slide please yeah so we join hand with development impact bond uh, around 2 years back and this is our third year we just started entered in third year and you can see the scale also the scale is quite good and, good, and i think this is one of the biggest uh, uh, social impact bond on education in the world and fortunately sard is one of the partner this is supported by british asian trust ubs optimus foundation michael susan dell foundation tata trust dfid and mittal foundation comic relief foundation so many leading institutional donor corporate they came together and they are supporting us and this bond is little different compared to the regular grant so if you are doing good you are getting reward if you are not able to do so your grant is also deducted so this uh, this bond is i think probably first time launch and fortunately it is launched with niti ayog so niti ayog is like a planning commission to government of india so initially it was planning commission now the name has changed so it is called niti ayog and niti ayog is putting lot of pressure to mobilize resources from leading corporations and you know the, the institutional donors and fortunately sard become the part of this uh, first uh, uh, social impact bond in india so right now they are having four partner and uh, each partner is having different unique thing like some partners are working on principal leadership some partners are having their own government aided school but sard is directly working with government school children because we don't believe to run a parallel structure so wherever we work we work only with the government and we are implementing this program with north delhi municipal corporation and the delhi scenario is little different compared to other part of uh, the country in delhi we are having six civic agencies we are having uh, you know the uh, as, as regards the uh, municipal corporations are concerned we are having a trifurcation in municipal corporation north delhi municipal corporation south delhi municipal corporation east delhi municipal corporation and then we are having delhi government school we are having uh, you know the delhi cantonment board and we are having nai delhi municipal council so each agency is having their own set of school and each agency is having their own mayors or their political stakeholders and their commissioners their other bureaucrats so the the system is little complicated because you need to uh, coordinate with all the agencies and ensuring learning level outcome and different agencies are having different directions so i will speak more about in my coming slide about this dip program next slide please so you can see that this is uh, uh, i think the third impact bond other two impact bond the first impact bond is uh, launched with a single organization called educate girls and they implemented this program in rajasthan and other two uh, um, bond is uh, you know on uh, health uh, but uh, they, uh, this is the first bond where they included four partner from uh, across the country so mainly right now they are doing pilot with this first bond the largest bond on education is in delhi maharashtra gujarat and uttar pradesh and uh, we are covering the largest civic agency in delhi with this social impact bond next slide please yeah 
so as i said that uh, we are implementing this program with north delhi municipal corporation and we are very grateful to honorable mayor and all the officials of north delhi municipal corporation to extend their support on this unique program which is one of the largest uh, social impact bond on the world and first time implementing in india with niti ayog mm -hmm. so right now we are having 10500 children uh, that we are covering every year and the major focus is on grade third fourth and fifth in uh, uh, north delhi municipal corporation they are having seven uh, uh, you know the zones because municipal corporation has divided into different zone and uh, uh, total zones we have uh, 12 zones in delhi but out of that seven zone is covered by uh, north delhi municipal corporation and out of seven zone we are covering five zones of delhi in five zones we have selected 30 uh, schools these are the primary schools with north delhi municipal corporations and we have set up uh, you know child resource center so this child resource center is very unique in nature it is having a set of innovative teaching learning material it is having interactive tools a so lot of ic devices has set up we are uh, having lot of uh, you know the talking wall in the room so different walls are having different themes and that we are covering through our remedial support teacher so we have given 30 teachers also so we are conducting baseline in the beginning of the year and then we are having end line um, by the end of the year and we compare our result with the uh, uh, control schools and try to focus on common error misconception and learning uh, gap that basically we are covering so around the year having lot of capacity building of teachers uh, and the model is little different now we are sending our teacher trainer in the school so when teacher trainer is going to school they are covering 60 to 80 percent teacher rather than one or two teacher they were attending the centralized training but here the model is very different so we are having academic support group member these are the thematic experts so these experts are going to school twice in a month so while they are going so whole day they are there and they are conducting training for teacher on the spot and lot of uh, you know teacher many time they complain that why don't you come in my class and demonstrate your uh, pedagogy in front of the children so you are having opportunity also to work in front of the children you can also uh, cover their uh, learning gaps and at a time you can cover 60 to 80 percent teacher without bringing them out so uh, this model is very successful and then um, um, you know at the end of the year we are also endorsing the effort of best teachers so we are giving them award also teachers normally you know municipal corporation and other government they are giving the award on overall development but here we are endorsing the effort of thematic expertise so we are giving thematic uh, uh, expert award so teachers are good in mathematics or teachers are good in language they become the ambassador for their own mcd and they can build the capacity of other teacher within mcd so hand holding is also one of the major focus area that we are trying to ensure during our intervention and uh, student performance is a ongoing thing so we are having lot of periodical assessment and these uh, assessment tools are designed based on the competency and we are having the domain also easy moderate difficult domain and the competencies are knowledge application and understanding so these tools are designed in due consultation with the teachers and now it is available on a dedicated portal also so from that portal also anybody can download next slide please so these are the zones you can see that north delhi is as i said that is one of the biggest and largest uh, uh, you know civic agency so you can see their number of schools and their zones south delhi is the second largest civic agency and east delhi is having only two zones so all together 12 uh, zones are there and you can see the mcd is basically covering the most pathetic area so even a cycle rickshaw puller child or a daily basis worker child 
that is basically covered by municipal corporation of delhi uh, delhi government still they are covering the well off or the lower middle class children but mcd is the biggest survey agency as regard the primary education is concerned in delhi so uh, delhi compared to mumbai kolkata chennai is having the maximum number of school because delhi is having roughly around 4000 plus school and fortunately mcd is covering the largest uh, you know children as regard the primary and nursery education is concerned and uh, we are working with the, the largest civic agency which is having more than 700 plus school next slide please yeah so this is the model we have given academic facilitator to all these 30 schools so at the beginning of the year we try to identify the children those who are uh, not able to cope up with their studies we call cns children need of academic support so these children are identified through baseline and then we concentrate on the children round the year so grade third four fifth is getting regular input from our teacher so my teacher is having a dedicated room in all these schools called child resource center we are grateful to north delhi municipal corporation because they have given us free space and we have given the teacher full time teacher teacher is working during school Hours and they, that teacher is also having very good coordination with the local teachers of uh, municipal corporation. So we identified the common error, misconceptions, and learning gaps of each children. We are also maintaining all the data so student wise also one can track what is learning when they had the periodical assessment. And uh, around the year that the, they are having lot of input, lot of quiz, puzzles, games are there, and now. We are having uh, interactive tools also, and uh, because municipal corporation they have set up smart smart uh, lab almost in all the school. So even in smart lab also, children not only CNS but other children of grade third, four, fifth they are also getting input from our teachers. So my teacher and government teacher they are working very closely, and we do have lot of workshop on general issues also with the teacher like during. Uh, corona pandemic we had very good training on gender because gender is equally important for primary school children we also had another very important training on life skill so 21st century core life skill so we are also conducting lot of uh, important training even on positive discipline also we are conducting training protection gender inclusion is a cross cutting theme so i am not talking about isolation so that my team is conducting training we have centralized training also but uh, my uh, academic support group member they are visiting these schools so we are having a pair one language expert one mathematic expert both these experts are going together and they are giving input twice in a month to these teachers without bringing them out so actually we are not investing much money we are not hiring the hall we are not spending money on refreshment we are not giving any transportation charges so we are not giving any honorarium to the resource person so these thematic expert round the year they are having lot of follow up and for and this model is really very successful and then we are also identified the thematic expert within the government and we try to recognize them and i will show you the result in last two years and this result is also you know conducted by third party assessment so that also i will show you in my next slide next slide please so you can see the result first year result because that was the beginning of the year we joined only in uh, september or october and march we were having the end line in fact in feb we had the end line because march the formal result is announced by the school so we were having only 4 5 6 months so during that time because new civic agency we never worked before this north delhi municipal corporation so first year was 100% but this last year result is 600% and that is over achieved over achieved i can say and uh, we are very grateful to the north delhi municipal corporation who is extending their support and their teachers are extraordinary so although we are doing pilot in 30 school but now we are planning to scale up this learning in other schools uh, also because north delhi is having 700 plus school next slide please 
so you can see grade third and fourth focus and uh, you know now fourth result is also very good because uh, the first year when we started our intervention during that time the children were uh, in grade third so you can see their beginner level was very high and now you can see the beginner level is reduced so uh, even in fourth also uh, you can see so grade third and grade fourth first year and second year result you can see on your screen and you can see how we reduce the beginner level and how we increase the advanced level so now children are reaching to advanced level they are reaching to intermediate level so that is really um, uh, you know showing very good result next slide please so government of india is also putting lot of pressure on ensuring quality and as i said that initially people were having different definition of quality some people were talking about good infrastructure some people were talking about uh, you know uh, the, the, the uh, teacher performance but now under the uh, chairmanship of prime minister honorable prime minister narendra modi ji he recently has approved a big amount and uh, with the help of world bank and they are Uh, ensuring the teaching learning process even the government has set up a national assessment uh, agency also it is a autonomous body independent agency and that will be going to do pilot in many state next slide please yeah just uh, sorry miss uh, so can can you conclude soon because uh, we I'm, need to I'm go coming, with I'm others coming, yeah. And these are the just photograph I am just going to through. So this is the mayor hall. Honorable uh, mayor has launched this program. So children, all the teachers from 700 plus school, they were there when we launched this big program. Next slide, please. And you can see another launch by Niti Aayog. These are some of the talking balls in schools which we have set up in North Delhi Municipal Corporation School. Next slide, please. so some of the classroom processes you can see on the screen next slide please we also had assessment on tablet now so first time we did pilot now we are having many tablet lab even we are having many smart lab also so children are very good even on these technical devices also so they are showing very good result next slide please Yeah. So in many school we have set up the smart lab. MCD is having their own lab also, but these are the complement from leading corporation. So even HP, Oracle, and other leading corporation they are extending their support, and they have given very advanced devices. Even 360 degree laptop you can see on the screen, and there is a very advanced e podium that also we have given to many school with the help of leading corporation. Next slide, please. yeah so round the year having lot of training this model is little different as i told you now we are sending our trainer to school and they are conducting training in house during school hours with the teacher next slide please so we also had lot of visit by dib funder so uh, risk investors and the outcome funder both have visited our school periodically so some of the visit photograph you can see on the screen next slide please yeah these are the worksheet even during corona time also we have sent all these worksheet online and we are getting very good result even the online quiz puzzles that also we have introduced during corona time children are showing performance and we have created google sheet also so school wise now we can track the data next slide please yeah thank you so much thank you and you all are welcome to join hand in india with uh, our municipal corporation of delhi anybody is interesting you are most welcome and we are very much in the heart of india thank you thank you very much mr sudhir uh, badnagar uh, this was a very interesting uh, interesting uh, presentation and then uh, i would have questions but i i, I will you know to to not in the interest of time i will 
uh, go uh, right now, right away with uh, the next presenter, Mr. Raymond Saner, uh, the Professor Emeritus of the University of uh, Basel. And Raymond, uh, the floor is yours and the mic is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know, can you see my slide? Um, do you see it? So far, no. Um, we don't see your slide. I don't see your slide, so I think, uh, yes, it's coming. It's coming, okay. Uh, hello? I see you now. I don't okay. see your slide, Raymond, well, but I, I, see, I see you. So, do you have to? Um, no, you, you told me you have to go from here to here. Can you share your... No, you come back to, to this. Let me try again. No, come to here. Yeah. Share. Share, okay. Maybe that was the problem. Now you have to submit mm -hmm. this. Can, can, okay, can you see no, me no. and the slides? No, this that's is coming, good. that's coming. It says that All right. you are sharing your content. Yeah, yeah. So All right. I, I'm, I'm sorry for being a little bit late with my um, skills of, of handling all the new technologies. Learning technologies to uh, add and continue with my previous speaker, there's, there's plenty of things to, to learn and to add. Well, thanks a lot for giving me time to make a, a contribution. I'm aware that we have a very little time left. So maybe, I don't know, you have, um, uh, uh, Jean, could you in indicate how much time is left and how much time can I still speak and make a presentation? So, uh, please go ahead and make your full presentation. We'll have to, we'll go a bit beyond the, 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 okay. the time, okay. I mean, to be fair with you. Okay. Well, what I would like to highlight is what uh, we heard from the initial presentation given from, from um, Madame Lombardo from the UNDESA is to, to focus on how could local authorities, cities finance their uh, SDGs. And as we all know, in many, in many of our countries and, and many of the cities, especially the mega cities, there is interest and and desire to implement the sdgs but not enough money and know how how to attract finances to do the necessary for to implement the sdg strategies that countries have so i'd like to focus on particularly on the financing part and also who are the people and the stakeholders involved in the re in, in issues regarding to financing from an overall perspective could say for cities as well as for countries but let's stay with the focus on cities contributions could come from the business in the cities contributions are of course also to be considered from uh, philanthropic organizations or civil society organizations including also for instance cooperatives governments uh, through their tax income and revenues can do some about the financing for the SDG implementation. And it, there are, as of course, also help from international organizations. We already heard the, the example <clears throat> given at the introductory presentation about Mexico, which is a very novel uh, uh, contribution to, to, to find ways to get business, government, and an international organization to work together to support uh, implementation of municipalities in Mexico. Now, let me start with the government. Just very briefly, an overview picture, right? We can have different ways to finance our uh, plans for implementation. It could be from the left side of this slide, done all by the government itself. If the government has enough for sufficient revenues, for instance, through taxes, it can finance the plans it has for their respective cities. If that's not the case, it could go through public procurement. It could go through public-private partnerships. It could go through concession 
it could also through uh, go through privatization. So there are different options to find ways to get financing um, assured. Uh, and governments, of course, have to consider what that means. Let's say here the example of public-private partnerships. I find in my own work in different countries, there is not necessarily, governments do not necessarily know what these different um, options, what that means. As you see here on the list, build and transfer, build, lease and transfer, build, operate and transfer and so on. The, these different options for public-private partnerships to go back to what I just showed you before, it's just one, uh, one option to finance or to find financing for uh, development projects. If it is PPPs, then and oftentimes the Ministry of Finance, you have a few, few people who know the, what, what these different uh, PPP options mean from a legal point of view, from a financial point of view. This is very important to know this because after all, if a, a city as well as a country takes on loans, we're talking about loans, bonds are loans, they have to be paid back. So uh, cities have to know what uh, um, the implications will be if they take on loans, what kind of, for instance, PPP they should engage in. So uh, the knowledge about, for instance, PPPs, uh, to do it um, by themselves, to hire in consultants, to be advised. These are very strategically important considerations to be done, not only at the national level, but also at the city level, especially if we talk about mega cities. You see, here, I'd like to say, overall, when we look at SDG development from a city point of view, a city has to, of course, coordinate with the central government. If a city uh, um, looks for bonds in foreign currencies, say US dollars or Euro, there is risk attached to a foreign currency bond. And normally that has to be discussed with the central government because they don't want to carry too much of a risk in case of devaluation of their national currency. So there's a need to coordinate with the central government. There is a need also to make sure that the different ministries talk to each other because the SDGs are interdependent. You have we had a very great example before about education in, in, in India. Well, education, that's certainly one SDG four, but education is also relevant for most of the other SDGs and to look for ways that make education not a silo, but also a contributor to the development of, let's say, water city development, um, all this has to be thought through. And it's, a, in that sense, a, a challenge to organize coordination and consultation. Consultation basically means to talk to the different stakeholders and to find out what are their needs, wishes, and expectations of a local government. <clears throat> Now, uh, let me move on in the interest of time. I already mentioned that about the coordination and consultation. Now, let's look at business. What could business do to help a city find the financing for its own SDG implementation? There are lots of new developments. You've heard already maybe from social impact investing, impact bonds, outcome-based contracting, uh, and I will say more about ESG, economic, social and good governance investment, as well as others where you find a lot of very interesting webinars that you could uh, watch and, and to be in, become informed of all these new instruments which are being discussed and tried out by uh, partnerships from the uh, private sector, financial sector with uh, the respective governments. Now, to say, uh, as an example, ESG, environmental, social and good governance investment for, uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, private sector participation in partnerships with governments. It came about in 2004, and there was the time when the Secretary General Kofi Annan took the initiative to write to 50 CAOs of major financial institutions to basically 
invite them to come discuss and find out how could they contribute to the UN Global Compact. And that was done also together with the IFC from the World Bank and the Swiss government. The discussion then started to define what could be done to make financial infrastructure related investment to make it sustainable, to make it fit also with the other requirements of the SDGs. So ESG type of infrastructure financing should ideally be able to fit into this um, uh, picture that it would address basic needs of the population, uh, it should empower major uh, stakeholders, it would address climate change, in, in that sense reduce the risk of climate change, have also a way to not be, uh, uh, to, to, to not um, be too heavy on the use of natural capital and to make it a governance ap approach that will be corruption free and will be transparent and part participatory. So there is a lot of talk in the financial sector about ESG based infrastructure uh, financing. E stands for environment, reduction of CO2 emissions, S for social criteria to make sure that the big infrastructure projects that are either physical or social infrastructure projects, that the labor relations are addressed in a positive and in a, um, a supportive and constructive manner. G, uh, governance, I already mentioned that before, that the decisions will be effective, they will, that the infrastructure project will be complying, compliant with the uh, law uh, of, of the country, and it will meet the needs not just of the brokerage firms or the, or the banks, but also of the other different stakeholders who will be uh, be ideally then be benefiting from such an ESG-based financing of physical or social infrastructure. There's a lot of money overall that is being discussed that should fit into this uh, format of ESG uh, infrastructure uh, financing. As you see on, on this slide, we're talking about 20 trillion US dollars that we considered could be put into as asset on the management of these financial institutions. Now, what, what do we know about how effective it has been so far to use an ESG form of um, infrastructure investment? Now, what we know is some of the, of the uh, uh, factors are quite positive. Some are still lagging behind. For instance, when it comes to the social factor, labor relations, there is uh, an agreement uh, uh, overall that that still needs to be developed further. Uh, more could be done. A lot is being done under the ESG uh, label in terms of environment to try to reduce climate change or the risk for climate change. Um, and the G in itself, the governance part could also be further developed. So uh, you see here you have one, uh, one possibility that's being discussed by the financial institutions as to what could be done to make the financing of uh, infrastructure beneficial and fitting with the SDGs overall. International organizations, as been already mentioned, uh, for instance, have recently, um, uh, you heard from uh, Mr. D'Aragon, uh, there was this very interesting new development of a partnership between the Mexican uh, government, UNDP, as in that sense, as a consultant, as an expert, and a group of banks to finance the development of municipalities, 1,345 municipalities of areas in Mexico where poverty is still very uh, strong, very high, and how to develop these areas based on a concept that the UNDP is advising them. So just to give you an example as, as to what could be done about financing of uh, cities in areas that need to be supported as as is the spirit of the SDGs is to reduce poverty, 
to make be more inclusive to to take everybody on board as much as much as that po is possible civil society organizations let's look at briefly at sdg 17 which 17.17 17 is about uh, ppps now the text itself clearly states encourage and promote effective public public private and civil society partnerships so it's not just only about uh, money it's not only about financial institutions who are more or less willing and able to do their best to make financing of infrastructure to be more fitting uh, um, with the sdgs but there is also a lot that our governments can do with civil society organizations we have after all when you look at the sdgs and our meeting annual uh, annual meeting in new york when the high level political forum happens we have now <clears throat> a whole day where cities present what they do about sdg implementation we have <clears throat> so called local voluntary local reviews there's plenty of great information available that you could follow and read and learn and compare uh, so some of the participation in terms of sdg development consists for instance of the government or business cooperating partnering with local civil society organizations because after all let, let's uh, be clear um, the idea is not to do something or plan for them them meaning the rest of society these people oftentimes are organized we have uh, uh, women who orga are organized in women's groups we have uh, different groups that are due to their interests due to their also organizational capabilities they could also contribute to uh, implementing the sdgs at the local level so my conclusions will be let's remember when it comes to financing a lot can be done by the government itself provided it has the revenues that it could collect through taxes now in some countries the taxes are very low hence the revenues are very low as well and not much could be done through the government hence partnerships through public private partnerships are almost a must because there's no money around for the government to implement its physical and social infrastructure but if that's the case you still have to think about you know if it's bonds the bonds have to be paid back so we we should be mindful of looking for instruments even partnerships with the private sector and the banks and the government and civil society that are promising sustainability and so it's not shifting a lot of responsibilities to pay back the loans to the next generation it should be meaningful in a sense of intergenerational justice you have more information about what i was just uh, talking about and of course our friends and colleagues at the united nations office of sustainable development who have organized this event they have plenty of very very informed and very competent people so we i think which is in other words my my closing is to say we count on you jean and your whole team to sh further share all the great information that is now uh, showing up how to finance sustainable development also at the city at the sub-national level and that gets me to conclude and thank you very much for your attention thank you very much professor Sanner. Uh, Raymond, uh, this is uh, thank thank you very much for. I mean, we 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 ourselves rely on experts like you also to help us to to provide information and then uh, to have uh, critical insights in all those things. Thank you. It was very informative. Your presentation was very informative. Uh, I will go uh, now directly to. Oh, I think we could hear Miss Bernardia uh, Iriwati. Yes. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, <laughs> sorry for you. <laughs> I'm not good with names. <laughs> but it's a pleasure to have you uh, on board. So please, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, 
Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, very good morning. Very good afternoon. Uh, uh, greetings from uh, UCA Jaspak Secretariat in Jakarta. First of all, uh, it's really a great pleasure for me to join this event. It's very important topic because it's about finance. Uh, and thanks uh, to uh, United Nations Office for Sustainable Development for inviting me. Maybe before, uh, yeah, can we go to next slide, please? Um, because I, I, I was told that I should run RAS. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this organization is basically a global organization uh, connecting more than 250,000 cities and local governments in more than 144 countries. And I'm covering this Asia Pacific, that include uh, China, India, Indonesia, all the uh, uh, countries in Asia Pacific. And uh, we we uh, we are the largest actually regional uh, section of uh, UCLG. So uh, the mission is to be United Voice and World Advocate of Local Governments. We are actually facilitating in the U United Nations uh, this uh, local governments uh, advocacy. So can we go to the next slide? So we cover almost 3.76 billion people. I don't think I can. I should elaborate more about this Asia Pacific. I think uh, all of uh, speakers uh, aware how important this region is because uh, uh, more than fifty percent of our population now live in cities, and then fifty eight percent of the population uh, of this is a productive population, and more than fifty percent also a young population. So it's very important. But I also would like to highlight here the importance of resiliency uh, uh, because uh, this this uh, region is a very prone uh, to disaster. And we also have a great value of the uh, contribution from the local econom economic uh, development given by small medium enterprises. Like uh, in ASEAN, uh, these SMEs contribute more than 51% uh, uh, until 97%. Uh, so um, uh, we have been working on the localization of SDGs because uh, I think we all aware that uh, almost 65% of the uh, SDGs target must be done at the local level. This is why for us, uh, uh, raising awareness uh, on SDGs, uh, as well as uh, making uh, integration of the SDGs into local plans and also implementation, that will be that, that a crucial part of our work. So, um, um, uh, and this is uh, why we, we play uh, and we work very closely with the local government associations, uh, because they also have an important uh, role to play here. Uh, and then uh, we promote a peer-to-peer -peer exchange uh, uh, as well as the uh, best practices exchange and making a substantial effort to disseminate local uh, agendas and mobilize uh, members as well. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I think a previous speaker mentioned about the, the VLRs, uh, voluntary local reviews, and now we are working on, and when we look at the VLRs, almost a big number of VLRs come from Asia. And then now we are preparing the voluntary sub government uh, 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 review uh, in several countries uh, uh, at the global level, including uh, uh, two countries in uh, Asia. So in the next slide, uh, you see uh, what we have been doing in this uh, situation. Um, uh, we, we have been also fostering knowledge exchange. Uh, we have been compiling the uh, uh, cases, uh, uh, how local governments responding to COVID and also by uh, also producing these uh, guidelines uh, how uh, these uh, uh, you know local governments uh, uh, could handle for uh, for the covid and we also uh, provide and facilitate these uh, uh, donations uh, from uh, uh, cities to other cities so through city to city cooperation and capture also smart practices and advocacy and policy recommendation by having a policy recommendation. And the other aspect that we are fostering is on the uh, uh, alternative financing. Uh, I think uh, uh, we also are aware that uh, uh, sectors that are affected most by uh, this COVID is of course uh, economy and especially uh, in tourism. So we are uh, doing also some kind of uh, virtual events and connecting with uh, some providers uh, for telemedicines as well as the uh, tourism. So in the next slide, uh, you will see that, um, uh, I think this is a, in the current situation, uh, we are decision makers uh, and the crossroads, uh, whether we want to go back again to the time uh, before the COVID, 
or uh, uh, we, we, we can engage, uh, uh, we can embrace these opportunities taken uh, from this COVID-19 by having uh, adaptive measures uh, in the recovery uh, after COVID. So um, um, this is something that also uh, we, we are now campaigning that uh, uh, there is a very strong linkage uh, between uh, COVID and uh, SDGs uh, uh, as well, not only on the uh, uh, SDGs number one or number three on well-being, but also other SDGs. So in the next uh, uh, slides, uh, you see um, limited progress. I think I will just skip here uh, because uh, um, uh, because of uh, there are also on track stagnant and regress uh, of the SDGs targets. And let's let me uh, go straight on the in, uh, investment part. This is on uh, the financial options. The next slide, please. So alternative financing towards SDGs. I think the previous speaker mentioned uh, so much uh, variety of the financial options, which is I really appreciate. Uh, uh, I think this is what I, I, I'm going to share is the case of Indonesia. Uh, the financing towards the SDGs, they have, they call it SDGs 1 by compiling, uh, uh, pooling uh, resources available uh, for SDGs implementation. And uh, also recently, uh, the government uh, uh, decided to uh, have this uh, uh, money span uh, for village to uh, focus on SDGs uh, starting from 2021. So in the next slide here, um, uh, some of the financial options include um, Next slide, please. Uh, financial agencies, uh, 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 Zakat, and private sectors, Philanthropy Foundation. Maybe for, for some of you, you might not be very familiar with what uh, Zakat means. Uh, in the next slide, you will see that uh, uh, Zakat is a basically term used uh, in Islam, uh, in which uh, Muslim uh, uh, is uh, man Monday obligated to uh, provide two point, around 2.5% 2 of their wealth or income uh, for donation. Next slide. Uh, so in this, uh, uh, next please, next slide. So potential zakat uh, as a source of funding, uh, uh, there is uh, already almost 233 trillion. Uh, and you can see here company zakat, income zakat, agriculture zakat. So uh, this also uh, government uh, uh, put this as uh, uh, one of the source of uh, funds uh, for SDGs localization. So in the next slide, uh, you will see that, um, uh, yeah. So this is example of the cooperation uh, using this uh, uh, funding uh, from the SDGs one that I mentioned earlier uh, by building a hospital, local hospital. Uh, and this is also contributing to this uh, uh, SDGs three, five, one, eight, and nine, and output increase uh, include also 0.41% and added value increase also a lot. And this also increased employment. Next, please. So this is my uh, three uh, remaining slides. So philanthropy also has been uh, contributing to this uh, SDG localization uh, by providing donation, uh, also uh, having a trading, uh, equity capital, uh, impact assessment, blended finance, and then next slide. Um, yes, next slide, please, yeah. So, uh, yes, I think for the uh, important is uh, to have, uh, yes, this is uh, another financial option that just released recently uh, by uh, global, uh, this is what they call it, GCOM, uh, Global uh, uh, Confident of Mayors on Climate and Energy. In the next slide, uh, and we are the uh, funding uh, of the uh, GCOM. Uh, this is a commitment of cities around the world uh, uh, to uh, uh, mitigate and adapt climate change. Uh, in the next slide, uh, you see that, um, next slide, yes. This is, a, we call it Climate Gap Fund. Uh, this is initiative of GCOM uh, together with German and Luxembourg government. It was announced in September 2019 and launched recently, uh, virtually. So it aims to mobilize uh, more than 100 million euros and in order to unlock up to uh, 4 billion euro in project financing. So uh, UCLG ASPAC is currently uh, serving as the Secretariat of GCOM for Southeast Asia. So in the conclusion, uh, I think this is the last slide. Yeah, I think I can skip this. So maybe in the conclusion, I will uh, highlight a little bit more in terms of uh, 
why um, uh, many, many cities, local governments cannot access this finance. I think the important aspect is about the uh, 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 important of having conducive environment because uh, what local governments uh, need are uh, uh, authority mandate in order to access different kind of uh, finance, including taxation uh, or maybe creating bonds and having PPPs and uh, public-private partnerships. And like uh, in Indonesia itself, uh, uh, there is uh, up to now, I think, uh, there is no single municipal bond release uh, by any municipalities. And, and West Java was trying to, West Java was planning to have it, but I, I've done, I'm not sure if it's already released uh, uh, this municipal bond. So um, uh, important is having a good regulation, uh, also having uh, guidelines and uh, local governments also have lack of capacity uh, in uh, creating or, or building a form, form of what they call it a public-private partnerships. And they also sometimes are not aware how this uh, risk uh, could be also shared. So um, I think it's important to have uh, uh, to increase the capacity of cities and local governments, particularly in de developing countries, in order to have these uh, PPPs on place. Uh, and uh, uh, lastly, I think um, uh, there are a lot of finance uh, access that uh, local governments can do, but uh, local governments also have limitation in terms of making uh, bankable projects or programs. And sometimes uh, credit worthiness level is not high. So um, I think I like to conclude by saying that uh, the opportunities are huge uh, for uh, financing this uh, SDGs implementation. But important is that um, uh, local governments uh, should be given a mandate, should be given uh, further authorities uh, to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Bernard, <laughs> uh, for your uh, presentation. It was excellent. And uh, I'd like to um, ask, actually, I don't have questions from the uh, people, uh, the audience, but I had a couple of questions, but maybe uh, I would propose if you have questions to one of uh, of the uh, uh, maybe you have questions to the other panelists. So maybe we can start with you asking a question to someone uh, if you uh, have any. And then um, is it do you have any question or comments on what you heard from the other panelists or something you would like to to say? Yes. Sure. Yes. Yes. May, may I just, uh, just follow up on, on the excellent presentation we just heard uh, from uh, Madame Bernardina? Um, you mentioned at the very end of your presentation, you you suggest there should be more uh, autonomy for local uh, authorities, for cities, to be able to do what maybe they know how to do or could. Uh, do, but you didn't say why they don't have the authority. Um, I I assume you're talking about just simply the competence issue. You know that central government, depending on the country, has a, a, an enormous amount of competence, and it's not so easy to delegate this down to the city level so they could do what they think they could do best within their own. Um, situation. Could you say about have a bit more about how could uh, cities or local authorities gain more, um, let's say, competence? Actually, you are right in terms of competency. Uh, I'm also referring this in the level of decentralization because uh, Asia Pacific are very diverse uh, region. Uh, in terms of uh, decentralization level, uh, there are some countries that are centralized, there are some countries that are decentralized, and there are some, com some countries that are in the process of decentralization. We have done a, a, a kind of study uh, looking at the conducive environment of uh, uh, more than 24 countries in Asia Pacific, looking at the regulation, looking at the fiscal transfer, looking at the fiscal revenue. Um, many countries have limitation, even like uh, foreign borrowing. Uh, I think some countries have limitation on that. And also in terms of uh, uh, taxation, uh, what kind of tax that uh, can be also, uh, 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 you know, raised or generated by local government. So uh, we have uh, that kind of study. Uh, I think we are very happy that uh, recently, I think about a, a year ago, ESCAP also released a report of the importance of fiscal decentralization. 
um, uh, and then uh, we have been uh, we have contributed on that uh, uh, looking at this uh, uh, importance of fiscal decentralization but uh, we have limitation because uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in the lobbying and advoca advocating the importance of local governments in fiscal decentralization. So I think this is role that uh, associations should play. And then uh, you mentioned rightly about uh, different kind of uh, ministries have different kind of uh, uh, goals and also targets. So what I think what we need uh, is that uh, um, uh, Fiscal decentralization uh, is a key and also uh, giving a chance also for cities uh, to come up with the municipal bonds and also uh, come up with uh, different kind of taxations. Uh, that's also uh, quite important. So Japan is quite advanced uh, in terms of uh, fiscal decentralization. Uh, I think um, uh, Indonesia is uh, in terms of uh, conducive environment. Uh, they are giving everything to local governments in terms of PPP, in terms of creating municipal bonds, in terms of uh, uh, developing uh, uh, what they call it local government state owned companies, local government owned uh -huh. companies. But they haven't been able to release one municipal bonds. We, we had last time a discussion with the Jakarta Stock Exchange. And finally, we found out that uh, uh, leaders are not very confident of having municipal bonds uh, i think uh, this kind of in in, uh, in addition uh, uh, you are you are given uh, uh, enabling environment but you don't use it sometimes you see so i think we need to uh, uh, put together a level of uh, decentralization in the other aspect is about capacity competency capacity so i think having trust even jakarta has not released a uh, one uh, single bond uh, 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 you know uh, in infrastructure uh, so I, in, even Jakarta is able to do that, but they haven't been uh, released any much purpose. I think one uh, aspect is about the uh, confidence uh, among the leaders, uh, local leaders particularly. They want the coaching, they want to be coached, they want to be uh, kind of guided uh, uh, on these uh, aspects. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks. I hope I answer that. Uh, yeah, very much so. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to, to know if uh, other speakers, or even you, Bernardia, if you have uh, a question for the uh, other uh, speakers, panelists, do you have any questions or comments? I mean, in India, the government of India is yes. taking a lot of uh, initiative. They have already introduced a variety of bonds. But of course, on education, this is first of its kind. And after this bond, many other international civil societies, leading corporations, they are working on the same line. And hopefully, in future, you can sign more bond in future with local civil uh, agencies and uh, local governments. I have a question here. Can I? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. One of the limitation uh, in uh, uh, in developing countries, uh, cities, uh, they have to work based on the administrative boundaries. So sometimes, you know, if you want to deal with the uh, waste, uh, uh, maybe the city is uh, intermediary city, so there is not enough waste to be treated, for example. So I think the, the they should be able to work with uh, uh, their surrounding uh, uh, neighborhood, their surrounding local governments to be able to come up with a big investment. Uh, so my question, uh, I think this is something that uh, uh, Asian cities do not have yet in terms of territorial development. Uh, uh, so that, you know, uh, they can work together and then propose uh, a big uh, investment plan uh you know uh not only within the city uh, but surrounding cities uh so that uh investor might be able to uh come and be attracted on this i think we don't have this kind of uh yet applied uh, in uh, major cities in in asia especially in the south but it would be nice to hear also from experience from you but i, I know this europe has a very good experience in uh, addressing this territorial development uh, another sec the other issue is about the uh, uh, resilient infrastructure resiliency. I think this is very important because uh, uh, many, many uh, uh, cities, you know, when we're looking at this uh, uh, resiliency aspect uh, of infrastructure, we just need extra 3% of investment plan and we can save 42 billion US dollar uh, for uh, uh, net benefit from the entire life uh, span of in in infrastructure. So um, I think there's two questions. I don't know if uh, I this would like to, to share the experience uh, with regards to these two questions. Uh, what's in territorial development? The second is about the uh, resiliency aspects of infrastructure. 
just just wanted to add uh, from india perspective that uh, under the leadership of honorable prime minister narendra modi ji recently government of india has taken many initiative initially we were having planning commission and planning commission they were only giving direction to different state they were approving their plan but now they have changed the whole structure it become the niti ayog and niti ayog is you know bringing lot of leading corporations and international civil societies and they are very open on public private partnership so even in different sector now niti ayog is inviting international player to join hand with the local government and local civic agency so that is the new dynamic which has recently emerged in uh, our uh, uh, narendra modi uh, uh, prime minister leadership in india mm-hmm. thank you. thank you very much for for this exchange i would like to I have a question here and i, I think it, it relates to what professor sanya was saying about you know the the need to for the those bonds to be paid back and and, and then uh, so there's a question i, I received is it like how uh, okay for the impact bonds who's paying out the interest to investors who purchase the bonds and how this amount of interest is generated so maybe it it is a a question i don't know if remont remont you want to to uh, respond to this or um who else would like to 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 uh, respond maybe the, the also the ones who have experience with them well just a, a, a quick response uh, some of these interesting sounding new um financing instruments yeah, it it would be worth for cities to look at the subtext or the fine points in terms of for instance risk who takes the risk if um a uh, um a project especially in the social infrastructure domain education health waste social services in case it doesn't work to put it this way then who has to pay back the loan and there are some uh, rather sophisticated ways that at at the higher level you have maybe a government or a philanthropic organization that guarantees in case it doesn't work that they would step in so that the the, the 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 structuring of these new financial instruments it's very very important to have locally competent people who understand the fine points so it gets to be on the right track and it doesn't you know it also the other part that I wanted to mention but I didn't have time before governments of course change there are new elections or civil servants move on to another job in the government or move to the private sector so that the knowledge about these sophisticated new financial instruments we need capacity building not just for individuals individual civil servants but the whole institutions in the finance ministry but also in the other line ministries which are then asked to do these projects be it water be it sanitation be it education that they have enough people in their ministry that no matter how much turnover might happen in the future some of the knowledge remains in in these different ministries to ensure also sustainability of the governance capability of our governments Thank you thank you Ramon and, and then I think you you raised a, a interesting question I had this in mind also to we said this is very uh, a, a relatively new field so the experience we still have to know more about what's go, what uh, what is uh, good or not I I heard the presentation on education for example where there was a, I wouldn't say a conflict but uh, the, the, the there was this uh, I mean I don't know if it's a struggle but uh, about the numbers of students and then the quality of the outcome the quality uh, learning level outcome so it brings a, is it uh, again a new I mean at the same time you you have to negotiate with your it's a new donor in a way to to make sure that you know the the, the to make them aware to build their awareness that you also have to invest on the quality not only on the numbers So it goes like the, this is a to me it's something that comes out 
uh, also uh, very strongly. Maybe the, I mean, it seems to be going, but you know, I see this as a maybe. Uh, I'm looking forward to hear more, hearing more about uh, the, those experience to to see because it, it may be also kind of now you deal with many donors at the time, so and they they are also more interested maybe sometimes in numbers or you know different uh, objectives that maybe the user uh, of of those bonds uh, want to want, want to do so maybe it's a it's a difficult uh, uh, to conciliate all this uh, i believe so uh, i don't know if there are other questions we're kind of running very late now <laughs> and i thank you for for staying uh, staying with us so i i think i, I should uh, i, I should uh, uh, thank you uh, all uh, of course uh, i would like to uh, uh, thank my, my colleague from uh, uh, UNDESA, Caroline Lombardo, and uh, Merda, uh, Ms. Bernardia Irawati Chandradewi, uh, Secretary General of United Cities Local and Local Governments, Honor, Honorary, Honorable, sorry, Mr. Jai Prakash, Mayor of North Delhi Municipal Corporation, Mr. Sudhir Batnagar, CEO of South Asia Regional uh, Development, and Mr. Raymond Sanner, Professor Emeritus at the University of Basel. Um, I'd like to um, to uh, let you know that I thank you so much for, for uh, yeah, the, the great uh, presentations and then discussions we had. I'd like to also thank the participants, the UNOSD staff who were involved in the, the, the organization of this webinar. I'd like to let you know that next week we have a, another webinar and then it's a, we're doing a shift now because it's going to be the 29th of October, but it's going to be 10 p.m. in Korea, uh, 6.30 p.m. In, in Delhi and 9 a.m. in, in uh, New York. And the title is Leaving No One Behind, Persons with Disabilities and Addressing Inequalities in Our Cities and Communities. And this is in collaboration with our colleagues in New York. Uh, they will be live, not uh, this time. So the UN DESA divisions for inclusive development and the division for sustainable goals. So I invite you to join us. Uh, of course, I mean, if you can't, you, I have to say this is like today, all the material, uh, this webinar has been uh, recorded. It's going to be, it will be on the UN OSD uh, website and uh, will be uh, easily accessible there. Uh, once again, I would like to thank you very much, uh, all, all of you, the speakers, really was a very fascinating uh, uh, conversation, presentation, and we we'll look forward to also your, collab your collaboration and then participation in the, in the, the Mayor's Forum we are organizing in uh, November. So we'll contact you for this and then we'll try to, to go deeper in all the, the teams that we have been exploring uh, all uh, th those uh, past weeks. So once again, thank you very much for your participation. And it was a pleasure. And I I'm learning a lot by uh, listening to you. Uh, you're very uh, fantastic experts uh, in, the in this field. Thanks again. And I wish you the best.